going on? I'm Sheila Matthews and welcome to Logged In. This week the internet has been busy and there's a lot to talk about. And while Dominique is here with us in spirit this week, we got Martinzi back in the flesh to help us sort through it all. What's up Martinzi? This is week three of trying to take Dom's job. I'm almost there. Seat's getting warmer, seat's yeah, getting a, warmer. A groove, a groove has been set. Oh, watch out Dominique, because we're about to get into it this week. Is R&B dead? Naming the leader of your friend groups and artificial intelligence rappers out here signing deals are all things the internet was buzzing about. But first, we have to get into Kobe Bryant. Shortly before the pandemic, we lost a legend in Kobe Bryant, and August 23rd would have been his 44th birthday. He inspired a generation to become their best selves with the Mamba mentality. We have a big Anscape moment from our own senior NBA reporter Mark Spears, who revealed a hell of a Kobe moment in his last Hoop Stories installment. And guess what, Martinzi? We got Mark here to join us. What's up, Mark? What's up, Sheila and Martinzi? I'm glad you guys have uh, really enjoyed these Hoop Stories, and obviously the latest one is on Kobe Bryant. But I think the Kobe one is interesting because it's, it, it's real. I mean, it shows the competitive fire of Kobe. Why are you wearing this Adidas stuff, man? You know I'm Nike. I'm, I'm not gonna do the interview unless you get rid of that suit. And I think it's also one of those things as a, as a journalist, sometimes players test you to see if you're cool, to see if they could trust you, to see if there's somebody they should let, you're somebody they should let their guard down on. And so I think those were one of Kobe's tests uh, that I passed. He and I had a, a great, great relationship. There is one of several stories that we've had, uh, not all funny. Some were tense and then some were, were like deep, right? And and because he was certainly an athlete that cared about you much more than most athletes care about a journalist. So uh, certainly miss him as a person. And, and I hope people see this as something that's fun and not something that they think is uh, intimidating by him, but it was, it was certainly a challenge and he, he's somebody that always kept you on your toes uh, as a journalist and, and, and man, I miss this guy dearly. Thank you, Mark, for telling us that incredible story and make sure you check out the full Hoop Stories video. The link will be in the description. Leader of the friend group. There's been a trending conversation online about who the leader of the friend group is, and that has everyone talking. A lot of women have been speaking on how they want to date the leader of the group and not the one who's taking orders from someone else. So in your friend group, do you have like a leader? Do y'all look at it like that? I can't say that because if I say that I'm the leader, then they're gonna look at me like, Ooh. who do you think you are? The so chat's gonna, gonna be in shambles after Yeah, this. so it's an it's a in-game type of thing where we're all kind of the leader here and there's no one true person who kind of leads the pack. I get it, like you don't wanna, it's the worst when you hang out with a guy and like he's with his friends and you're like, if this was paid in full, they would send you to the store. Yeah. Like you're the runner, like yeah. I don't want that, you know? You usually don't wanna be the leader because one, now all the attention's on you. So whether all the good stuff happens, but also all the bad stuff. And when it comes to women, do you really want to be with the David Ruffin of the group? That was layered, okay? That was layered. <laughs> it depends on what setting if you want to be with the David Ruffin. Yeah. So yeah. like, some of the memes have been comparing the friend groups to like the Avengers, or in my case, Real Housewives. Yeah. So in your friend group, who's, who's the Monique of the group Oh. Potomac? See, but for, it's Atlanta over here, so my thing is like, who's the Nene? Like, Again, you want to be the Nene you do. in theory, but then in practice, do you actually want to be the I want to be the Kenya, twirl, gone with the wind, fabulous. For me, it may be a red flag of the person I'm talking to is always taking orders for someone else, but since we're on the topic of red flags, you gotta tell me about this new king of the red flags, Andrew Tate. Yeah, Andrew Tate, who is a British-born American, former kickboxer, former contestant on Big Brother. Apparently he's Mr. Misogynistic now, and he doesn't believe that women really have a place in society other than to bear our children. And now he has been banned from not only Meta products, but also I believe TikTok as well. Uh, so they're trying to silence him. In the realm of red flags, we gotta switch over to some more, but this time in music. Have you been keeping up with this Capitol Records FN AI man, I don't even know his name, but apparently they signed him to a deal. Yeah, so FM Mecca was signed by Capitol Records. He is a computer generated artificial intelligence rapper. He looks a bit like Takashi 69 and Lil Pump. What was funny was then old songs that he made or it or they, apparently he was uh, spouting the N word out here in these streets and it, they, he is not technically black. So uh, the internet was in uproar and now FM Mecca has been dropped from his record label. So they made a racist NFT is what I'm hearing. Yeah, people weren't quite feeling it. Who was in that room when these decisions were 
Well, it wasn't us. We, we, uh, let's hope. I can, I can probably yeah. guess there. But if it was us in that room, they were probably thinking green. So it didn't really matter. Wow. While we're on the subject of getting in trouble and thinking green, Fetty Wap is in some hot water. Fetty Wap pleads guilty on drug charges. You know, he once had the summer on fire with songs like My Way, Trap Queen, and we'll always have those songs on repeat because Mr. Wap is going away for, for a few years here. Charges include possession distribution charges with allegedly over 500 grams of cocaine, that cocaina. Yikes, Betty Wap, what are we, how are we feeling about this? This is another example of once you make it big, uh, you kind of got to leave the neighborhood alone. Like you said, he had two hit songs. He was probably well on his way to being kind of a superstar in hip hop and he just couldn't let go of that old life that he had. Apparently that was paying better than the record companies. Maybe that's a conversation that we need to have. Yeah. It's so lucrative outside of actually recording music that artists would rather still slang that dope. It feels like all of our rappers are going to jail lately. Who are we gonna stream? Yeah. Not these AI rappers, right? Apparently. Uh, it's clear that the future is upon us and music is changing in more ways than one, but you know what's not changing or who's not changing? DJ Khaled bringing the whole neighborhood out to be on his CD. 31 features, like, I think that's a bit ridiculous. Look man, he's not a rapper. I'm not even sure if he's actually a producer anymore. He used to be a DJ, not sure if he's still one now. So of course he's gonna, his entire album is gonna be other artists coming on to help him out. Is it my cup of tea? Maybe not, but I'll listen to a few staying alive. I didn't think that anyone could basically remix the Bee Gees into hip hop and it will work, but Drake and DJ Khaled made it happen, so. I mean, they did, and you know it dropped today, and the streets are saying that Jay-Z's verse on his album is gonna go down as verse of the year. I'm not gonna get us in the hot water of making that decision, so we'll let you all make that decision, so let us know what you're feeling about this Jay-Z feature that is on the album in the comments. Speaking of other artists, so who's someone that you want to drop some new music that hasn't dropped any new music lately? Miguel. Uh, oh, that was a wild card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that, I had that. Go. I've had that ready to go Whoa. for years. Not even months, but years. The real reason is not just because Miguel is a very good artist, probably uh -huh. one of my favorite artists. It's because he lost his girl, then got, got her, her back. back. Yeah. That so happen. the music is going to be. Yeah. So yeah, I can't wait for a new Miguel. Okay, so I really want Griselda to drop. Like I need some West Side Gun in my life. I need some Betty the Butcher, like the butcher needs to come. Like that's what, wow, we're like. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, I think here. people would assume It'd it would be, be like the, the other opposite. way. This is brand new to me. I love, I love that, that, that gritty rap. Like that's my thing. But I'm gonna get into some R&B now because you talked about Miguel, so I'm gonna run that playlist back when I get home. But speaking of R&B, you know, Diddy, Sean, Diddy, Combs, Puff, Daddy, Love, whatever he is, he said R&B was dead and had Twitter in a frenzy. Yeah, so I did just mention Miguel, but I will say Diddy somewhat makes a point. Any really kind of no. big, not that it's dead, but R&B that we think of, probably 1990s style music, maybe early 2000s, that's just not here. There isn't a lot of love in the music, and I think that's what he's trying to sell at this no point. You, you have Miguel, maybe Jasmine Sullivan, even Beyonce at this point is a pop star, not R&B. So as far as mainstream, top of the billboards, it's few and far between. Okay, that's fair. So I don't think it's completely dead. It's just not what we're accustomed to. There we have it. With Diddy being a vet or an OG in the music game, we gotta give him his props for always finding a way to stay relevant, whether it's through tweets or with Young Miami however he wants to do it. But there's someone on TikTok who's also calling out a product of Diddy, Miss Aubrey O'Day, who used to be in Danity King. And she's like, look, I'm living my wage. And there was this video that went viral recently because she's been photoshopping herself into scenes, yeah. I guess I'll say, that mm -hmm. she's not really experiencing. How do we feel about that illusion on social? Yeah, so it's just really the natural evolution of social media, right? So we started off with just everyone taking photos of themselves, and then people started photoshopping themselves as yeah. far as how they look and their skin complexion and stuff like that. Then we got into altering our bodies to get an image, and now we're just like, we're gonna put all that together and then we're gonna Photoshop ourselves into locations because who has time to go to Fiji, for example, uh, when you can just Photoshop yourself in? And like, no shade, but like, I haven't really heard what Miss O'Day has been doing since Danny Kane's, but like, 
maybe she can't afford to go to Fiji. Maybe, or, and I don't think anyone's thought of this, maybe she's very worried about COVID-19. And she's like, why would I get on a plane and fly hours possibly contracting this virus? If I could just Photoshop myself. Well, no, because she Photoshopped herself in front of a private jet. So I don't think that was like her concern. She could have flown by herself. My bad. You tried. Aubrey, he tried to defend you, sweetie. We're gonna keep going. So put me on because I always like knowing what you're watching because it gives me some good content to watch. <laughs> and we've been on the roll and people have been loving our suggestions. So Martinzi. Put me on. Uh, HBO Max show Rap Shit, which is from the Easter Ray universe of, of television shows. It's about two women from Miami. You just mentioned Young Miami. Trying to be up and coming rappers. I think it's based loosely on the city girls. You know, it takes a bit to get into his groove, but I think it's a really, really, really good show. But it's just overall, the music is phenomenal. It's gonna be the next show you'll probably wanna watch. It's fire. I have to check it out because I've been stuck in like the Easter Ray multiverse, uh -huh. but I've been stuck on Sweet Life. Yeah. That's my show. It's like the new Baldwin Hills. Did you watch Baldwin Hills? Like, were you like young? I mean, not like that you're old, but like. I wasn't the target demo. It was on when I was a teenager, but I did not watch. <laughs> well, Martin Z, it's been a pleasure. Tell the people where they can find you on the internet since, since I know that you were young enough to have your accounts win. Yeah, I got a Twitter in 2009, so. Ooh. Uh, uh, on Twitter, 10Z Johnson, and then on Instagram, Martin Z J. And if you're looking for me, you can find me on Instagram at toldby.she and on Twitter at toldbyshe. As usual, don't forget to check us out on all social platforms at Anscape. And remember to like, subscribe, and comment on this video to let us know in the comments too what you thought about today's show and some things that you want to hear us talk about in future episodes. Bye, everybody.